Oh, hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today, we're taking a look at the Class 1 Model Works 86 foot auto parts box cars in three different schemes. So, we'll see what you get in this soon to be released box car starting now. Okay, really cool packaging. It's got like a magnetic lid here, and you have some of the parts listed out on the boxcar here, right on the diagram. And then you have the boxcar itself, and to access the model, you flip open the lid, you pull out the blister, blister packaging, just making sure nothing else is in there. And there you lift off the hard plastic shell. There's wrapped soft plastic. The amount of detail on this, I've got to be very careful. I'm not used to that level of detail on rolling stock. And I was just about to break some stuff on the bottom. Also included in the package are roller bearing caps because this has roller bearings that rotate. So I'll show you that a little closer as we dive in. All right, first we'll do a rundown of the different schemes coming. You've got the Santa Fe, which we have a model of. The Chessie system, probably one of my favorites. Burlington Northern. You've got Detroit and Toledo Short Line. Erie Lackawanna, Grand Trunk Western. Illinois Central, Penn Central, Rock Island, and Union Pacific all coming in this line so the grand trunk western car we have here is what's called a type 7 car these were eight door cars and uh, they were kind of a complicated situation because in january of 66 they had door openings spaced 20 feet six inches apart then when they resumed production in august the doorways were pre were spaced 20 feet seven and a half inches apart so all cars had dual welds at each interior post uh, with the door change. So this made an asymmetrical side sheet. And that is some of the variations of the Type 7. As we look towards the end here, you can see crossover platform, coupler, coupler cut bar, brake wheel, tack board, the corrugation there on the end with writing. I don't know if I can zoom in far enough to see the writing clearly. It looks like we're getting some nice detail there that you'll be able to read. Corrugated roof, obviously. You can see the rods on the doors very clearly separately applied. The track for the doors to open and close. They subset into the body there. And all the emergency and warning labeling on the car, including on the doors. All the load capacities there talks about not loading the car here. I'm going to end up focusing on my pointer there, but you can see the latches, the lockdown latches, arrows to open them, etc. The Grand Trunk logo on the side. Here's a better side view of the door itself, and you can see the subset areas here and here on these doors. As we go to this end, you can also see some more warning labeling, stirrups and ladders for crew access, the wheels, which I'll show you later with a close-up of the trucks. And on this end, more separately applied grab irons, crossover platform, the coupler, etc. And really finely print and details. Really finely done print and details, I should say. All right, we're going to zoom back out because this thing is long. And we'll turn that. And you can see more of the same on the other side of the car. Realize we didn't finish 360, so we'll do that real quickly. So you can see that end of the car. And very importantly is the underbody detail that I want to show you because that really sets... Class one even further apart. Got all the 
bracing for the car, air reservoir, valve, plumbing for the brake line hoses all below. And even it looks like some hatches are molded in there as well. I think I may have misspoke. These look like they're separately applied. You can, if you look very carefully, probably at an angle, you can see this actuator rod running through the car with a little loop on each side. It's right about there. It goes through that valve. Make sure to activate or release brake pressure. It's going to be extremely hard to see the trucks. They're kind of tucked up in there. But you do have roller bearing trucks. I'll try to roll this a little bit so you can see. The roller bearing does in fact move with the wheel. It's a pretty nice detail. You see the three springs there in the center of the trucks. Very nice on this boxcar. Okay, here we have the Santa Fe version, and this is obviously a lot different from the Grand Trunk version because there's only one door in the center there, but you can also see there's uh, two different types of sides, welded and riveted sides on these cars, so you can see all the separation there. And then all of the door detail we talked about before. You see the airline hose on this one a little more prominently sticking out. And a little yellow. That might be brake line release or something with a little safety indicator. I'm not sure. I'm not very familiar with this era. So on this side, Santa Fe Auto Parts boxcar, got the AEI tag there. It used to be kind of the old system for identifying rolling stock as it went by, where it was located and such. And then a different roof pattern, color pattern. It's all silver, same pattern as the Grand Trunk Western. And let's look below here. So you can see the plumbing again, different configuration, it appears, oh, maybe I just had it upside down. Yeah, there is a different configuration because there's not that separately applied plating there on this box car. So they're going with a road specific detail on the bottom as well, just double checking that grand trunk for reference. So different configuration there. Remember on the Grand Trunk, there was plating there. There's like a little spiral uh, insert there. So lots of differences. These type of cars always make me feel really, really stupid and really, really not studied up. But most of this is just for you guys to see and discern on your own. One thing to note, the wheels, although a shiny silver on the underside, have kind of a misted rust appearance on the outside really hard to tell on camera especially when you go this way and the car casts a shadow on it but it's almost like a golden appearance kind of to show where to take away that unrealistic silver on the wheel face here is the type 7 illinois central auto parts box car and we've already kind of covered Type 7. There's also the Type 4 cars, which I don't have any examples of. Left and right sides are asymmetrical. Sheet widths next to the pockets differed between the left and right hand sides on the Type 4s. But once again, this is Type 7 again. So I'll just uh, kind of give you a 360 of this. Now, the manufacturer for these cars in real life was Thrall Car Manufacturing and International Steel Company for the sides. And the model basis was an 86-foot, 6-inch high-cube autom automobile parts box car. So you had the four-door cars with the ISC sides, indented panels, 20 weld side posts, two-line welds, and the eight-door cars with the ISC sides featuring indented panels, 20 weld welded uh, side post two line welds at EOCC. So between 1963 and 78, 
these were supplied the fleet of these cars swelled to over 11,000 it was like 11,073 and of the commercial car builders thrall car manufacturing assembled 3,544 of these cars placed them in the middle of the pack of the production numbers between the Greenville and the Pullman Standard and they supplied the, these cars from 1964 through 73. So we're not going to go over any more detail. You see some of the differences like the placement of the AEI tag. I'll flip up the bottom again so you can see once again another variation of the bottom and we'll run into operation. These cars are coming in just a tad shy of 12 inches, which 187th, if these are 86 foot, 6 inch box cars, then there's your sign. It's going to be about a foot long. But coupler to coupler, just so everybody knows, is about 13 and a quarter inches. Since these cars are effectively 12 inches long, the NMRA should be an initial ounce plus half an ounce per inch. So we should be sitting at 7 ounces on these for weight and we have 8.2 ounces so that's going to exceed the NMRA standard weight and that's fine um, as long as they're not bearing down your train and we'll get in a free rolling this to cover that. Speaking of NMRA compliance we'll check the wheel sets. Wheel set good, wheel set good, good and good. I'll check the others off camera to see if we have a problem but it appears to be good to go. NMRA coupler height gauge looks to be dead on. We'll go ahead and connect it, and it is dead on. Check the other side here. Again, dead on. Connected. Appears to be dead on. So, a very NMRA compliant car. All right, now we'll check free rolling. These are very, very free rolling. Got two of them together, still no problem. I'm going to go ahead and separate them, though, because now we're going to look at body wobble. So I'll just set this into motion. And it seems to straighten out pretty quickly, so I really push that one. It's a slight wobble. Sometimes can be adjusted by tightening the trucks. They're screwed to the body. No body wobble there. So, again, those can be adjusted with some tinkering. Check the third one here. That one doesn't wobble too long. So really, when we do the run by, you can see the body wobble because it's going to enter the grade crossing. There's going to be some uneven areas because my track work is not the best, but Overall, the cars are pretty nice. So, as I kind of recap this review, as we look at all three of these cars up and down my track here, I think they're really well executed. Really need to see the underbody detail differences, the differences between Type 4 and Type 7 that Class 1 Model Works plans on implementing into these cars through the different types of releases and all the variations they're going to be putting out. Well executed car in my opinion with um, not bad on the pricing and for what you get and it's a very nice car. So with that said I'll leave you with a run by. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time right here on the channel. Take care.